on the internet every weekday. You can catch us on thinktechhawaii.com. All of our shows are streamed on ustream.tv and spreaker.com. If you would like links to the live shows as well as any of our previous uh, broadcasts, you can all find all of that at thinktechhawaii.com also. If you would like to join us in our downtown studio gallery for any of our shows, just email J, that's the name, J-A-Y, at thinktechhawaii.com. My guest today is Otto of Otto Cake. In 2009, Otto opened the famed Otto Cake Cheesecake Shop in Chinatown. Despite that shop being on a dicey street, he thrived there and became well known for his delicious cakes and inventive flavor combinations. In July of 2013, he moved from that Chinatown location to uh, a new shop in Kaimuki, where he is now. And there he is thriving, and as is the entire neighborhood with him. And many people believe that he has the number one flavored cheesecake in uh, he's the number one cheesecake destination on the island. I would happen to agree with that. Otto is also a musician and an actor and a lot of other things. He has some wonderful stories to tell. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, you're Otto. Welcome. I um, have been fascinated by you ever since very shortly after coming to the island. My friend Stephanie Keiko Kong took me over to your shop and introduced me. And um, thank you for coming. Uh, absolutely. And well, yeah, I have to thank Stephanie again for okay. introducing us. Um, the cheesecake is out of this world. The flavor combinations are just that in inventive and imaginative and well done. Thank you. I mean, you can say I'm going to make a cheesecake that's bacon and maple flavor. Saying it is one thing. Actually putting them together and balancing the flavors nicely so that you taste both flavors Thank you. gently. Thank yeah. you. you. You tried you, really hard. Yes, and it shows. Thank you. It shows. And you also have killer coffee. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been doing that for a long time. I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah, Thank it's cold filtered. Cold brewed, yeah, yeah. Cold brewed. Yeah. Um, so it's a little smoother, less acid, and doesn't burn away a lot of caffeine, so it's a little pretty strong. Yeah, it's strong. And you know what? <laughs> Almost a year ago, I gave up caffeine, and it kills me that I can't drink your coffee anymore. Sorry. I know. It's, uh, I'm sorry? You can still do the cheesecake. I can still do um, <laughs> Yeah, I can still do the cheesecake. Let's talk about what you, what you are doing right now. Okay. So in Kaimuki, tell us where your shop is. It's on 12th Avenue, 1127. And I opened on the 4th of July of 2013, and uh, it's been about seven, eight months now. Great location. People, a lot of people come in and say they've always wanted to try my cake, and they don't like to go to Chinatown, so I've kind of gained a lot of people by oh. that way. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, um, well, let's say, do all of this. Where, where do people park when they want to come see you? There? I have one stall right next to my front door, to the right. And then there's two municipal parking lots, one behind the Big City Diner, and then another one, Jose's, that side. There's another big one, and plus there's street parking also. Okay. So people can get to you. Are you, you normally open at what time? At 10 a.m. every day of the year, except for Christmas. I'm closed on Christmas Day. That's, That's the only day. The only day, you only day take off? Every day. We're you don't take off Thanksgiving? No. No. Don't take off on Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, and until what time? Um, 5 o'clock, Monday through Thursday, 7 o'clock, Friday and Saturday, and Sunday close at 3. Okay. And your cakes aren't only available in your shop. A lot of restaurants carry your cakes yeah, also. Yeah, some, some, there's quite a few, yeah. Can you name some of them? I can. Um, the Downbeat Diner, and um, Sold the Cuba Cafe, um, Nordstrom's, um, Cafe Sistina, and um, one that I've had for a really long time is Mocha Java at Ward Center. Oh. And I think they're going on 23 years of carrying my cake there. Which brings us to yeah, an excellent point. I didn't realize this, that you have been making cakes for uh, t 20... 24 many? years. 24 this past years. January was 24 years. And before you had Auto Cake, and I love it that you don't have a last name, and don't tell me your last name. Okay. I don't. I don't ever want to know. Okay. I just like to think of you as Auto Cake. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's how you are in my address book. Um, you had. You just had a bakery. You sold. Yeah, wholesale. it was wholesale. And uh, back in th those days, there was no Starbucks yet, so it was a lot, lot, a lot of mom and pop coffee shops. So. You could, I supplied quite a few of those, but I think it was 16 at the, 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 the height of it all. And then little by little, they were all, they're not lasting, except for Mocha Java, it's oh. still going. 
the mom and pop coffee shops? What were they like? Well, were they like meaning that they were, Yeah, they were they, they were individually owned all over the island. Okay. Like how Starbucks is all owned and all over the island. Right. So it kind of knocked them all out. Were they as it when I but when I'm talking about boutique coffee, I'm talking about the coffee houses that take great pride in the beans that they have. Oh, definitely. Did, yeah, oh, yeah. Was that oh, yeah. It was here? that way. Yeah, definitely that way. And uh, other little things that went with the coffee that each one had individually, like some did sandwiches. Um, one of the places was Java Java, and on Kapahulu, and they did a chocolate espresso shake. It was one of their big sellers. Mm. I actually now do that shake at the bakery now to because they were the first person that took my cake. And the lady still um, buys my cake, and she has a Sweet Home Waimanalo. I forget to mention that they also oh, have my cake. Oh, I love Sweet Home Waimanalo. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> and they have my cheesecake there. Oh. And carrot cake, too. Oh, that's your carrot cake? Yeah, that's I didn't my even realize cake, that. Yeah. I usually go there for the acai bowls in the morning, though. Very and good. then I go to my favorite beach over on that side. Isn't that nice? Well, yeah, it is, lucky, now that I know. Lucky that you live over there. I lived in Kailua when I first moved here, so yeah, that was a nice experience. But okay, um, <laughs> I, as soon as you started talking coffee, that takes yeah, me down a whole yeah. another route. Uh, you so um, can people order your cakes for like special events? Oh, yeah, do you do that? Definitely, yeah. At least give me four days in advance, and I'll fit it in. I'm kind of like this new location. I'm kind of booked almost a month in advance now. Instead of the, just the four days that I used to be, you know, it's so busy that it's about about a month out. But I try to fit people in if there's a special occasion as best I can. And let's talk flavors. Okay. What are what is, what's one of your favorite flavors? Well, oh, definitely the orange chocolate chip is my favorite mm -hmm. flavor. It was the first flavored, other than the plain. I did the plain first, and that was the first flavored cake that I did after the plain. Orange chocolate orange chip. Orange chocolate chip. It's an orange flavored cheesecake with um, chocolate chips laid all over the bottom and a batter is poured on top and then baked. Oh, that sounds really good. I haven't had that one. I'm salivating just a little. <laughs> <laughs> I am too, actually. I love that one. <laughs> what, let's talk about some of the other flavors. Um, then the next one after that was blueberry. And of course, you want to hear unusual ones, right? So well, let's see. Any of them. You know, well, I mean, the maple really bacon. Good blue ma maple, maple bacon. bacon um, Let's see, um, beer and peanuts. Ah, get a, out! Yeah, and get Sounds awesome. Flavored cheesecake, and then I toast peanuts and put it in the crust. Do you really taste the beer? What, oh, what, yeah, what, you can definitely what kind taste of beer? beer? We just had Jeremiah uh, Wubbin here. I put um, Guinness. Oh. Because the flavoring in that really gets through the cheese and everything. So I've tried some other beers, but that this one Guinness that I found, it really comes through. Is it? It sounds like that would be more savory than sweet. Yeah, but it still has the same amount of sugar than oh, yeah. my other cakes, but it, the beer still comes through. Oh, awesome. Okay, what else? Um, peanut butter and jelly. Mm, um, that sounds good. What flavor jelly? Well, that's the thing. It can be anyone. <laughs> it can. Yeah, it can be strawberry, grape. You know, you can do whatever you want. And, yeah. and I also toast peanuts and put it in the crust. So well, you kind of get the chunky, but I use a smooth peanut butter for the... <laughs> For the cake. That sounds so good. <laughs> okay. Um, Fruit Loops. I've done like Fruit Loops. So I did kind of like a milker, milky, more tasting cheesecake and threw fl Fruit Loops in it. Oh, wow. Kids like it. You know, kids yeah. like they love color. You know. Did it have crunch? Yeah, a little bit of a crunch. Oh, that sounds good too. Okay. And the Red Velvet. And I have also, um, Red Velvet has a certain, it's a chocolate cake. I don't know if everybody's aware of that. It's a chocolate cake but it's red coloring. And then I do a um, blue velvet, but the chocolate is a different chocolate that's in the red, but everything else is the same. So I just did a different kind of chocolate. And um, I don't think anybody knows what chocolate, I don't tell anybody what chocolate, so that I have that exclusive on the blue velvet for a while until someone finds out what I oh, did. Yeah. I would imagine a very dark chocolate. That's what, Maybe. That's what I would imagine. And most people don't know that red velvet cake is just food coloring. I mean, it's really that's, just yeah, a chocolate just cake with coloring. food coloring. Yeah, it's a chocolate cake. But people go crazy about it. Oh, they do? Well, they think it's, like, well, I guess, you know, they love chocolate, right? So yeah. they're not aware that they're just eating more chocolate. You could, <laughs> you could have a chocolate cake sitting next to a red velvet cake and charge more for the red velvet and people would pay it. They would. I bet. Oh, I not that you would ever do anything. No, I wouldn't. I'd try to keep all the prices the same for any flavor. Yeah. And how do you come up with these flavors? Oh boy. <laughs> um, some, like the maple bacon came in, I was watching a movie and the kid in the movie got upset because the maple syrup touched his bacon. That's how I came up with that one. Um, 
My mom loves root beer, so that's how I came up with the root beer float one. Oh, that's um, awesome. I'm running a lot. I like to run, and things come to me when you're running, because it's kind of like a it's selfish thing, possibly. Yeah, it's a selfish thing. <laughs> so you're running, and you kind of think of things, you know, and flavors do come up while I'm running oh. a lot. Or things happen that you're eating food, and then you say, oh, wow, this combination might be good together, you mm -hmm. know, like cherries and almonds. I made, actually made a cherry almond cheesecake this morning. Have you ever made a cake that I, is that kind of fascinating <laughs> uh, and appetizing? Have you ever made it, tried to make a cake that really was more of a savory, like you use herbs in or? I, you know, I'm more of a dessert person. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I could go that route and I've thought about going that route, but I just haven't done it. I haven't yeah. passed that line, no. But I, I think about it all the time, like how I could do it. And I know what I would do. I just time and life is gone you know I, I mean the day is gone so yeah. quick for me you know that you know to go that route you know because it was to, really because I'd want to do it more you know yeah. and I'm just you know I need to have some sleep oh. <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like that the line between dessert and uh, s s sweet and savory is being crossed more and more it, it's uh, I don't know if it's more trendy to do um, but I'm seeing it a lot more, something like a thyme uh, sorbet or, you know, what used to be just an intermezzo could now be a dessert. Definitely. Yeah, I, I've done um, uh, strawberry basil cheesecake, mm -hmm. so it's kind of in that way, yeah. but it's still, I use just the same amount of sugar. Um, I do a strawberry basil lime, and that one really sold well. Well, that sounds really, good. Really, really good. And um, lemon basil, because, of course, there's like how many lemon basil pastas and <laughs> so that was a no-brainer yeah how many okay as you're coming up with these new flavors how many cakes do you think you're just saying no that doesn't taste right and you're just chucking out I know this sounds weird but rarely I don't think that since I realized you know back you know 24 years ago that I messed up a lot of cakes then until that January 29th that, that edible one. I don't think there's been any that I haven't really been able to sell that I can think of just one. And it was trying to perfect cotton candy. And that's the only one that I had a hard time with. And just one cake was about the second time I got it. So I, all the other ones are the first time. It's usually the first time I can, it's okay. Oh, well, I, I, have to, I have to flip my paper over. We're going to take a break really Certainly. quick. We're going to come right back and we're going to talk about that September 29th and what led up to the invention of the auto cake originally. This is the Arts in Hawaii on the ThinkTech Hawaii digital series, and we'll be right back. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Sharon Mori. He just said, why don't you take a break? Forum. So I'm like, okay, and you reached the end of the yeah. We have Hawaii perfect. State of Clean Energy. You've been doing it for some time oh, now. That's fine. And we have some fantastic okay. guests on there, unbelievable guests who give us okay, so insight about 40 seconds. into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very I'm just disappointing that good. <laughs> area of, of progress in the state. So we'd love to I've, I've done this before, Jay. We love talking to them. We love having their ideas. Is out of the table, so I want to come in and film some commercials some for the, this on. show Sorry, and the show we've got coming up at Kumukuwa. We enjoy, we enjoy yeah. ourselves <laughs> meeting with all these people <laughs> and hearing about yeah. the energy and the okay, state of good. clean energy and hopefully we advance clean energy for the state. So it's terrific. Join us. Ten. Okay, join it's us. every Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is Energy Day. Every energy Wednesday, Wednesday, four to five p.m. Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on Think Tech Hawaii. Energy we'll Wednesday. see you there. Hi, we're back and we are live. This is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. I am Donna Blanchard, your host and proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. We are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu. And I am talking with Otto of Otto Kick. So let's go back. You, uh, as a child, did you enjoy baking? Yes. And My father um, got me to make um, chocolate chip cookies and that was when it all started that it was something that I could do you know being a special education student you know that wasn't allowed to do a lot of things so it was something that I latched onto and he allowed me to do it I guess it was a pretty young age to even put it in the oven my mom was a little bit like, how young were you I don't want to say <laughs> I was really young oh I don't want to get anybody in trouble uh, okay 
<laughs> so, so you were you were very very young. Very young. And when putting hot things in, or taking things out of the oven, putting things uh, in the oven. So, and actually mixing, and you were mixing, you yes, were recognizing yes. at that age that what you were what putting in I this knew, mix. Yeah, it, for some reason you just knew. Just like the first time I ever touched a sewing machine, I could work a sewing machine without being and chopsticks too. <laughs> okay. I'm probably better on a sewing machine than I am with chopsticks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I get Still, something. It's not an Something thing. you're just born with, I guess. And roller guess. skating. Yeah. And roller skating. I think my mom said I could roller skate before I could walk. Uh, awesome. Okay, wait. We have, we have so many different directions. Cake. Let's do okay. the cake and then we'll get through the okay. other things. Um, so when did you start changing that chocolate chip cookie recipe? Did you? No, I kept the same. That was my father's recipe, so I've kept the same to this day. Okay. Yeah. When did you start futzing with a recipe? For cheesecake. Was it cheesecake? Yeah, was it the I first made up the cheesecake for that first. That was the first time that I ever really decided to, you know, not take it from a family recipe and make it of my own was the cheesecake. And the reason why I couldn't really go to my parents because I wanted to get it, make it for my mom for her birthday. And so it was kind of like a surprise, so I didn't really want to say anything, so I, I had to research it myself. and went out of the family recipes and did the cheesecake on my own. And not knowing how cheesecake is and you know how hard it is and it's not an easy thing to bake and and I just didn't know. And I guess when you don't know, you know, you there's no fear in. there, right? And I just dive right in and I did it. And I messed up a lot. I really did. I think I started in eighty nine in November and I think I got the first edible one was in January of nineteen ninety on January twenty ninth. Oh, okay. So three. It took a while, months. and her birthday was on the twenty first, the twentieth, and so I missed her birthday and gave it to her for <laughs> Mother's Day. <laughs> uh, so, how many cheesecakes do you think you made during that time until you felt like it was ready for mom? Sixty. Oh, I wasted you a lot. You love your mom, and you wasted a lot of <laughs> a grocery. Lot of waste. Yeah, a lot of waste. I think it was about, yeah, I would say about 60, because it was, I was trying to do it almost every day to try to get to that day, you know, the 20th, and I, it must have been about 60. I never been asked that question. I just realized that it was, been, it was about 60. Wow. And uh, so you were, you were just tossing, tossing, tossing the, the stuff away, because yeah. it just didn't taste... I were you looking for a flavor that pleased you, or were you looking for the traditional family flavor? No, I was, to, I, I was trying to, if you were blindfolded and the cheesecake was put in your mouth, you knew it was cheesecake. There was no doubt. That was my whole plan. I had been to many places and ordered it, because I did like cheesecake before I started making it. It wasn't something I never had before. I did have it before, and I had ordered it quite a few times. Or it, didn't taste like cheesecake in it that was on the menu at the restaurant and so I was really thought that that was important that it should taste like cheesecake if you were blindfolded mm -hmm. and that was my goal really and okay so that flavor and that texture your your cheesecake is your cheesecake is a tall um, it's a dense flavor but it's the texture is not you know sometimes they get kind of gummy yeah you keep a light texture right. with a dense flavor I think yeah. My professional cheesecake oh. <laughs> experience. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I've I've always like um, people that I've you know that know cheesecake well and have come into the shop and saying that they like it and they said it's so different because um, it's not the light and airy one but it's not that really heavy one. It's yeah. kind of in between. We've never had one like this before, and I've had people say that to me. So I've always used that saying when somebody has, a, what kind of cheesecake is this? It's kind of in between, not the heavy, dense one, and it's not that light, airy one that tastes right. like air, you know. Yeah. And so for all of these different flavor combinations, y you aim for that same texture as the, f the feel in the mouth. Correct. That you know that this is right. cheesecake, right. but those flavors are coming through. Right. If, if you think about like cream cheese mm -hmm. and you put it on a bagel, just for, for as an example, it's kind of bland. So think about what you're working with. It's something that tastes good. You all, every, most people like just plain cream cheese, but it's kind of bland. Mm -hmm. It just kind of sucks up the flavors that you put into it. You're lucky. It's almost like working with um, a painting. It's that first palette and then you throw whatever on there and it just takes it. I'm lucky. I picked cheesecake. You're lucky. Or it picked me or whatever. <laughs> it sounds like it kind of picked you. Yeah. 
I think it did. I mean, because you could have said, I want to make a lemon meringue for mom. I, yeah, if she does like lemon pie, it could have happened. <laughs> <laughs> Holla, mom. <laughs> um, so now you're very rarely throwing out a cake. So do you feel like you've kind of got the science part of it down? Yes, definitely, definitely. It's just thinking of new flavors. and Yeah. Okay, but now wait. All right, when, uh, I have to rephrase that question because when you talk about the science of it, then you say this much, this much liquid to this much Correct. sugar. And the, but then there's also this much flavor because the oh, flavor yeah, of definitely. a lime is much larger than the flavor of um, lily koi. Correct. You know, Correct. Or, or lychee. That's what yeah, I was trying you, to think of, lychee. I, I think that um, I eat a lot of things. Or, and I also like a lot of desserts. And so I don't, I mean, how do I explain it? I, I, I eat a lot of things, so I know what they taste like. So I know, like what you're saying, like lily koi, you have to put more lily koi than you would put lime. Mm -hmm. Be meaning that I've had lily koi before, and I know that you have to have a lot to get that flavor. And lime, you're right, lime is almost more than orange. There's more, I think lime and lemon are very similar. But orange doesn't have that, what lime really pulls. Right. And it's such a smaller <laughs> fruit, too, you know. Yeah. So that balance, I mean, you talk about it as though it is a science, but that's an artistry. Yeah, a lot of times I don't measure. <laughs> you know, I know, I know, <laughs> kind of, but, you know, it's, I think it's called how about the time I've been doing this, too, you know, yeah. so it's not something I just started. I did, I did measure more in the beginning because I knew from my mom telling me that you, when you measure, it's like um, chemistry. You are making a chemical reaction in the oven. Mm -hmm. Most cakes, cheesecake's a little bit different, but you know, you are making this chemical reaction to have an, uh, something that's edible at the end of it. You know, so you're putting chemicals in it, like baking soda or baking powder, to make something rise. So you're, it's like chemistry. Right. Okay? So you, exact science is how a cake is made. But then you're putting in a certain amount of lime, and you've got to have. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm chancing it in a way, but I, I feel like I, I've been doing it for so long. It just, you know, it's just like I know that's going to work. It just I comes just know. to you. Yeah. How many cakes do you make on an average day? Um, that varies. You know, it really does. I think I can make 38. I think was the max that I've made. So I think, and then if, I'm, you know, 18 maybe it's basically. Oh, 18. Yeah. Um, and you have you have a little cake. I've bought one of your little cakes yeah, before. Yeah, I do have three different sizes. Oh, you have three. Yeah. And I have an eight inch. I mean, pardon me. I'll start with six, eight, and ten. Okay. And ten is the one that I cut and sell by the slice. And the other two are, you know, people have a little dinner party, a little smaller, or one personal one, almost. Yeah. Well, not a personal one, but <laughs> <laughs> that's you, not, uh, that's honestly. Uh, there's there's too much there. You want to be able to savor those, right. you know. Uh, so, let's talk about the myriad other things that you do that are also quite interesting. Are we good on the cakes? Is there yeah. anything else you oh, wanted no. to say about no, them? Cake is good. Because you're known mostly for the cakes. Correct. A lot of things have happened in my life because of the cake. So yeah. Uh, opportunities. Yeah, it's opportunities that came through to in you. my life. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about the Chinatown and where you are now in Kaimuki? There have been a lot of stories written about what has happened there. Yeah, it, it, um, it, yeah, it, 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 it's a difficult part. I've, I think I've had a really nice life, and when that part comes up, um, it's sad. You know, I mean, when you have, it almost breaks your heart, or actually it did. You know, when you have people coming in, customers coming in and telling me these stories of what's happened to them, like parking or walking to the store, it, it, after a day, it, it does build on you, and it, it, it does hurt. And I think that getting all, that away has made me a really more happier person because I, I think it's not so much what happened to me, and I, I think that it was reported what was happening to me because I could speak about that, and maybe that would help. But it was really more what was hurting me the most down there was what people were coming in and saying were happening to them in Chinatown, not just d saying it was on my street, just wherever they came, walk through and something happened to them or had happened to them even the day they, they weren't coming to my bakery and mm -hmm. they'd come and tell me. It was almost like a confessional of what would happen to these people in Chinatown. So let's 
clarify that there at the location where you were and there there have been many stories written about what was going on there Correct. I don't think like we're breaking news here or anything but at the, the location where you were there's unsavory criminal activity yes and going on it was and I you know it's it I have it on video. I have it on photographs. So yeah, it really was happening. You yeah, know, it wasn't. and they did not like it that you were there. And they, they didn't. I had one guy come in and tell me that um, their sales were down with drugs, and he was telling me that the reason why they're mad at me is because more people were coming to that street. You know, obviously that you know I'm selling cheesecake and I'm doing well there, so that means there's a lot of people coming in and out and you know walking down that street more than they were, and it was scaring the people who bought drugs from them. <sighs> That they were losing sales, and that was what he was telling me. I mean, you know, he is, you know, you know, you, you can't believe everything everybody says, but gosh, when somebody comes in and tells you that, and it, it just felt like from his heart, that's why they were doing it. And so they were, they were threatening to the customers. They were more than threatening to you. They oh yeah, they actually they, they beat me up three times. One female employee and pulled a gun on one, another employee. And not in the shop, outside. This all happened outside our shop, in the day, not in the night. A lot of people think that these things were happening at night. We weren't even open when the sun was down. Broad daylight. Yeah, we were open, only open when there was sun. And despite that, for a very long, for four years, you stuck it out there. And I think a, a lot of people really hoped that that was going to be the anchor that was going to turn around that area that um, you know I made a point of every time I walked around the neighborhood I would come over and bring friends over to see you and would have Thank to you. get some cheesecake Thank while you. we were there of course but I wanted to keep the good traffic going there and it is completely understandable that you didn't stay and I know there there were a lot of other people in the neighborhood who were behind you and wanted you to stay but you didn't really get the support internally yeah, it, it like I said, it, it you know it's um when these customers are coming in, it's breaking your heart. You know that's it's hard every day to hear these. I can't even say the stories; they're really bad. You know, I can't even repeat some of the things that these things had happened to people, and that that really was the end. Besides the gun, you know, because I that that was when I said, you know, I don't think this is really good for me anymore because I don't think. Um, there's there's an end here you know I thought in the beginning that you know if you expose something that was happening that was bad good would always prevail you know and I had that the way I was brought up you know and that's the way it, things would go that way but even if you show these people um, an actual gun being pulled and showed it on the video um, had somebody who ID'd it and seeing the video, I mean, there's even a, it was a first Friday when this gun was pulled. You could see a family walk by with children, mm -hmm. then the gun comes out, and then he stops the whole gun thing, and then another family goes by. You know, so it's it, when you and I showed them when I gave that to the police, and they said that something would be done. This is, you know, we've got it on video, we have IDs, we have all this stuff, and the guy was still there to the last day when I was moving out that day, staring at me through the window, and we're em emptying out the bakery, and he's still down there. So it's hard that, you know, I, I, that was kind of like, I guess I did have to leave because I don't think they're, and they're capable of doing something about it yeah. or wanting to do something about it. You know, some, some people have even said, maybe that's the whole thing with Chinatown is to keep it there so it's centralized in one location and so it doesn't spread out to the rest of the island. It's like keeping your tonsils. And somebody said, there's a TV show, yeah, or some TV show that even had something like The Wire or something, like that's what they dispensed everybody in, and they just said the bad people in one area. Uh, interesting. I don't, I've never seen the show, but I've somebody, even, show somebody who interviewed me once told me about that. It almost sounds like that. I find it completely flamoxing to know that there was video, uh, you know, showing the problem and that nothing was done about yeah. it, and, and um, <coughs> I'm very sorry that that happened to you. I'm very sorry that that happened to Chinatown. And and um, I live in the area. I love Chinatown. I love, there's some great shops. Oh, Roberta Oaks, that, you're wearing a Roberta Oaks shirt yes, today. Yes, purposely. Um, and Missy Owens at Owens yeah, & Company. Owen Company. Downby in, Diner. Down, I mean, love sold Downby. to Cuba. They both sell my cake. You know, I really love this place. And I really, a reason why I came down here, you know, it was one of the reasons is I thought it was a really cool area. Yeah. And then, 
just didn't work out. That's well, all because, of, you know, you know if the drug dealers weren't here, it would be perfect. Here. Yeah. Well, and let's also talk about um, the, the Dave Stewart restaurants and um, the Arts at Mark's Garage. Everybody is really, oh. really trying to make great things happening here. And, and, and I'm yourself, not giving... And yourself. And, and, and me. Yes, <laughs> Kuku Kuku definitely. Theater, we're trying. Um, uh, I, I, I don't think anybody faults you at all for saying you got to move. And now where you are in Kaimuki, there's, uh, there are other shops coming in around you that yeah, you are. I, 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 people say it. I'm, I'm not going to say it, but they said, oh, you brought these people. There's more things happening in this area. I'm like, I don't know if that, anybody would follow a cheesecake guy. I mean, you know, but I mean, if they are, that's great. Because I think that area is great. I mean, uh, the people are so happy that I'm there. You know, I've, I've never been so welcomed anywhere that I've uh -huh. Then, then there. I mean, just people still keep coming in and saying, "Thank you for coming to the neighborhood. Thank you for the neighborhood." You know, it's just amazing. Like yeah. the people in that area. Uh, you deserve that, Otto. I think this is your time to feel that you you went through a long, hard battle, and this is your time to flourish there. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk about roller skating in the next segment. We're going to take a little bit of a break here. This is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series, and we'll be right back. I'm Hong Jiang. I'm hosting Tuesday's Asia In Review at Think Tech Hawaii between 4 to 5 p.m. In my shows, we bring to you important issues and events in Asia, um, issues related to the culture, society, the environment, and history. We want you to be more connected to events happening in Asia and in the Aloha. My name is Dan Bauer, and I'm the general manager of the Plaza Club. The Plaza Club is Honolulu's premier business club we're located in the heart of the financial district on historic Fort Street Mall. On the 20th and 21st floors atop the Pioneer Plaza, our commanding skylight views, along with our award-winning cuisine and service, are known as the place to do business downtown. We offer professional as well as social events and programs to our members and their guests, all tailored to enrich their professional and personal lives and to give them the cutting edge that they deserve in business. Why don't you consider becoming a member of the club? Call me at 531 seven seven eight eight or come see me and let's talk business and how the plaza club can work for you again my name is dan bauer i'm the general manager of the club and i'm here for you hi <laughs> we're back and we are live this is proof this is the arts in hawaii on the think tech hawaii digital series and we are talking i'm donna blanchard and we are talking with otto of otto cake aloha aloha who you used to roller skate for the state of Hawaii. Yes. Tell me all about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I go back that, um, like my mom said, that I learned I could roller skate better than I could walk. And I just I felt very comfortable with skates on my feet. So I was, I was capable of, um, like, I've even worked at a restaurant where I delivered food, coffee on skates. So very oh. comfortable with being on skates or with shoes. And okay. um, by that happening, um, I ventured to a skating rink as I got, you know, in different things. And then um, I could skate really well there. And the people that taught, like, classes pulled me into the classes. And I really extremely did really well in the classes and advanced into higher classes. And they um, started putting me into roller skating meets. And I had state championships here in Hawaii back in the day, and not anymore, and um, I did really well, and when you place in those, you get to go to the regional. So I would go to the regional, and I would also place there, so I would be going to the nationals, so I would be representing Hawaii at the nationals. What, what was our region? I'm sorry to interrupt um, you. Northwest, which included oh. um, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Alaska. And Hawaii, or and oh. and I'd have to place in that region, and then it went to the nationals of the whole United States. And you went to nationals how many times? Seven times. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. Doing, <laughs> and not just you were just speed skating, mm. but you were also figure skating. Yeah, I was actually figure skating, and the part of figure skating would be pairs. Was what I did the most of was pair skating, and did, did some singles, and but speed skating. I, 
I really like speed skating. So you're doing like a triple sow cow, the same stuff that we see on ice skates? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that is correct. I, I mean, I, I, did, I did have a double, I mean, a triple mapes is the most that I did, but I, I did do a lot of doubles. So I did doubles. What's a, a mapes? We don't hear mapes during the Winter um, Olympics. Toe is the same thing as um. mapes, different names. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, th th this is this is pretty amazing that you um, d had a natural ability to skate really before you could walk. And how do you have older brothers and sisters who put the skates on you? How did that even happen? Uh, I <coughs> um, my parents must have put them on me. Honestly, I, my brother's younger than me, so I was probably skating before he was born. He said, "Here, he can't walk yet. Let's try Let's these skate. skates." <laughs> See how he does. Why not? Yeah, and it, it just, it was kind of a natural, you know, I just started skating, you know? I mean, wow. I think I was going backwards that first time, you know, it was really, a, it was a very easy thing for me, you know? I just, the concept was, yes, that's easy to do. It's very efficient. Yeah, oh, I believe it. I mean, I can, I still skate to this day, so it's still fun, you know, to like skate around the streets of Honolulu. <laughs> Do the the old fashioned kind or the inline? I do both now. I, I was of course I'm old, so there was only convention. I call them conventional. Conventional. So conventional, side, yeah. and then to the inline, and then yeah, I can do both. Yeah. And I imagine you making your thirty eight cakes just skating around the kitchen. Yeah, I could. I could probably do that. Yeah, my kitchen's big enough now. The kitchen in Chinatown was small, but yeah, this kitchen's bigger. I could probably skate and do it. For yeah. efficiency. Oh yeah, definitely. Because I, I am that. complaining how far I have to walk from the place where I make the cake to put them in the oven now, I'm where I used to just turn around and it was right there. You know. Now you can just glide over glide. there. I could cross it. <laughs> Pop it right in there. And deliver. And get a film crew because I think there's a reality show. Yeah. <laughs> In your future, <laughs> or a new sport, yeah. or both. Um, so, how many years did you spend in? Uh, we we don't we don't call it professional skating because you weren't amateur amateur, amateur, amateur right, yeah. co competitive skating. I God. competitive skated. I think about seventeen years. Yeah. Oh wow! A lot longer than most people. Yeah. It's a, it's a really short, you know, and usually young. And I think I lasted. I think maybe about 10 years older than anybody in my last category that I was. I was 10 years older than anybody in the category that I was in. And still? And still skating just right up there. Because the last nation, nationals, I was in the top nine of about 25 skaters. Oh, wow. I didn't place first, second, or third national. I won at regional, but I didn't win the nationals. And I was in the top nine. That's OK. Yeah, We're thanks. still proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. You know, you come from a little island without even a roller skating rink. I'm actually practicing outside in cement, and all these people are inside, you know, with air conditioning and on a wood floor that, that you skate on at the nationals yeah. and the regionals, and I'm skating on a parking lot or a basketball court, practicing and then going over there to this huge rink where there's not even a f cement here big enough than the rink there to even do the routine as you would do it there. So you actually go there and you're doing something you've never even done where all these people have done it thousands of times or hundreds yeah. of times and I've never even done it once. So, you know, it was lucky what I was able to do. You yeah, were well, lucky. Maybe you couldn't have all the nerves because you had to focus so doggone much on what you were doing that was brand new to you. Right. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah. And I, I think that, um, being from Hawaii is very lucky because when you do travel like that, when you say you're from Hawaii, people are really more friendly to oh. you than I think if I said from I was from another state. I mean, I'm not saying anything against any other state, but it just seems to be this real friendly. Well, they want a place to stay when they. And you're and, and you're also <laughs> competing against these people too, you know. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, so they're all competitive, you know. So my whole life has been com competition, competition after competition. So, you know, being they were really nice to me when I went to nationals, and I could see how they would treat people from other states. So, it wasn't me. I could see it happening. Like I'd, they'd say, "Oh, you're the one from Hawaii," and they'd want to meet me, you know. Other than, "Oh, I'm competing about this guy," they're almost not thinking they're competing against me. It was kind of nice. Aww. Yeah. Unique. I have a feeling that maybe word got around too that the you, you got to meet the guy from Hawaii. He's a really cool guy. Uh, so well, thank you. Let's talk about some of your other coolness quotient. You're a rock and roll star. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've I've enjoyed uh, rock and roll life for quite a while now. 
it's yeah. been a, a really nice journey, and it, it's all because of the cheesecake, you know, that I've gotten How's through that? again. Um, <clears throat> well, um, I made my, I make cheesecake, and then I meet people by the cheesecake, and I got um, a job at a record store because I used to drop off my cheesecake to a radio station, and the radio station opened a record store, so I got to work at the record store. Uh -huh. And being in that record store, I met some people in a band, and they asked me to, if I wanted to be in a band because they were going to move the bass player to a guitar, so they have two guitars, drummer, and a bass player, and I became the bass player. And oh. and then I never even they even had, I think the first thing I was asked by the drummer, they said, "Did you do?" You, play bass and I go no do you want to be in a band and I said yes <laughs> so I learned so I learned I think uh, seven, 17 days and I played my first show I learned how to play the bass in 17 days played my first show and I've never put the bass down since then I we have to take another break I don't uh, I'm sorry we have to take a break we'll be right back I'm Hong Jiang host for Asia in review on Tuesdays and I'm David Day Host for Asian Review on Thursdays, both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Hong Jiang, host for... Hi, this is the Arts in Hawaii. I am Donna Blanchard. We are back. We're live. We're talking with Otto, who uh, apparently there is uh, very little physically that if you put your mind to it, you cannot do. Right. Well, I don't spell very well, but that's I'm not counting that as a physical thing, and no one oh, okay. needs to spell very well. We have spell check on everything, and that's you can true. you can give voice yeah. commands now. No. But physic for you to say, were you a big fan of listening to music prior to this? Did you feel like you really understood what the baseline was in a piece of music? No. Uh, well, how, how did you do it? <laughs> I well, you know, I think that I knew how to dance and keeping the beat and the bass player and the drummer kind of keep time oh. and so it was kind of that it was the beat and me you know being able to i know i'm white but i can dance so i can keep the rhythm of something you know so i that i think that's that was my hope why i was able to pick it up just like that okay so but the notes had you any music experience well because you're still I, playing I, notes it's not just rhythm i did but not much not, not a lot. Okay, so that you became a part of that band, and then it led to an, many bands. I think a total of nine bands, and in the '86 list still to this day, and we still play. We um, were nominated for a Hoku, and that was pretty amazing because I remember being a little kid and seeing the very first televised one and. Being wow, wouldn't it be great to like you know do something in Hawaii and be on that punk rock band being nominated for a Hoku Award? Wow, <laughs> didn't think that uh, would happen. Did it happen? So a little bit of a dream that I had back in the seventies that came true. Very cool. Uh, uh, and you still play? The yes, eighty six yeah, is still, still out play. there. We Where still do you play? play? Um, <clears throat> we different venues, so it's not like a certain place. Um, Anna Bananas. A lot of event, a lot of venues that we have played are gone now, but we played the Haleiwa Gym was. The first show we first show for '86 was was played there. Um, there was seven, a famous place called 1739 Kalakaua Avenue. We played there many times. Um, we've opened up for a lot of bands at um, World Cafe, now at Republic. Mm -hmm. um, been really lucky. Been quite a few tours on the mainland, oh, and awesome. we have five CDs out. And where do people go to find iTunes out? now? Okay. Yeah, they, their CDs are now kind of. Just go to iTunes. Yeah, iTunes is, yeah. Where do we go to find out where you're playing? Wow, sometimes I don't even know. Um, <laughs> don't, I, don't, I think, don't, oh, okay. I guess I'm following my Instagram. I always put all the shows on my Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah, for the bakery, Auto Cake. Okay. At Auto, Auto Cake. At, at Auto Cake. Okay. On Instagram. And name off some of the other bands that you've played with. I have played with the Sticklers, and we're going to play a show this summer. We haven't played for many, many years, and 
um, another band called Incinerary Device, Intimate, Intimate Riot, um, Patty Judy in the Dirt, The Wrecked, Crack Skull, FTP, and I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> okay, good list. <laughs> now let's talk, we just got a little bit of time left, but I want to talk about um, Hedwig and the Angry Itch. Inch. <laughs> inch. 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 No, it's inch. 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 Yeah, inch. inch. Yeah. That's the joke. That's okay. the inside joke. That was pretty good. <laughs> uh, so this is a show that you did. It's a one-man show. Uh, it, b basically, a um, one-man show. There is a band on stage, and um, the main character that I played really doesn't let anybody say anything. So it is almost like a one-man show. It's the lead singer of a punk rock band, and um, there's dialogue in between and telling the story of how she got from here to there and what <laughs> happened in between. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so it's a um, transformative story. Very transformative. Okay. Very. <laughs> and you have, uh, you've done the show several times yes. over yeah, the I last think I decade? Yeah, I think I've done it um, actual on stage over 30 times. Oh. But we a lot more than that, dress rehearsals and practices. But yeah, are you going to do it again? Have you been thinking about I, it? I have. I actually have been thinking about it only because I'm getting older, and at the end of the um, show, I also play many characters in this. This one person plays a lot of characters. At the end, I have to play a 17-year-old boy. At the end, so yeah, I'm getting up there in age. So if I'm going to do it again, I have to do it pretty soon because of body type. You know, it's no shirt at the end. There, I don't have a shirt on, so it's hard to pull off a, you know. Well, seventeen-year-olds move very differently yeah, so than I we do. I'm a little too. aged seventeen-year-old, yeah. so <laughs> possibly. Yeah. Um, I would really love to see that show someday, so I hope that you do it again. Well, I have it you. on... I have a lot of people come into the bakery and say, when are you going to do it again? Yeah. When are you going to do it again? Or, and I've even recently uh, tried to go on... I'm not very good with Facebook. I went on there and somebody actually has something posted on my page. I don't know how you do that. That's how I don't know about Facebook. Oh. <laughs> and trying to get me to do... Posting something and trying to get me to do Hedwig again. Uh, yeah, I hope you do. I, I, um, people I know who know what they're talking about Tell me how wonderful the show is. Well, thank you. And you produce, don't you? So you come can, over to Kumakura. You can help me produce it because I've been the producer of all the productions. Oh, I can help you with that. And directed totally it, and I directed it. it. So it's a, little, it's a little bit more work, you know. So it'd be nice to have help. I would you. love to help thank you with that in any way I possibly can. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to see, I'd like to be a part of making we'll it. We'll talk happen. about that. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk some more about that. We're not. Oh, we're not stopping yet. <coughs> okay. Oh. 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 Have we missed anything? Those were the items that I had down to talk about. The the bands, Hedwig, the roller skating. Oh, we didn't talk about running. You're an avid runner. Do you run every day? Almost every day, yes. Almost ah. every day. I think I might miss um, four days a month or three days a month, but I run almost every day. How far? Three to four hours, about. Oh. Yeah. Any idea what how that translates to distance? Um, no, I don't. I don't know the distance on that. No, I just keep running and keep running. It's the music keeps me going. I have the you know the Walkman little iPod. I guess you'd call it now Walkman. Uh, oh yeah, you did say Walkman, <laughs> didn't I you? Did say Walkman. And I didn't stop you. Oh, iPod. <laughs> the shuffle. The shuffles are nice. It doesn't. It's, the weight is gone. And holds a lot of songs. Uh, the weight is gone and it doesn't yeah. skip. Yeah, it doesn't skip. You're right. It doesn't skip. <laughs> Shame on both of us. Um, uh, so you you are you described yourself before that you're kind of like Forrest Gump. You just started running and you enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, how he did it in the movie. It, it, he just went a little ways and he just kept going. And that's basically how it happened for me. I was doing Hedwig, and I know that i trying to be the 17-year-old boy, and obviously the first time I did it, I was a lot older than 17. So I um, start, started running, and um, I didn't think I was going to run that far that night, and I just kept running, and I went a little further. Obviously, we're in Hawaii. I can't run to another state. I probably would have, but I just, <laughs> kept, I just kept running that night, and I, until I think I was really far away when I got tired, and I had to actually walk home that I had run so far away from my house. Oh my goodness! I yeah, then you but now I know. I learned. Turn now I learned. To, <laughs> to, not always, though. Some nights, you know, the music just gets me, and I keep going. But. So, m m music, and what kind of what type of music are you listening to? 
occasionally. Every, anything. I don't, yeah. there's not a, you know, a certain type. It's everything. It's more uplifting, obviously, or faster, you know, when I'm running. There's not like slow, you know, waltzes or anything, you know, but yeah. it's more of a fast pace. And if you, <laughs> it's funny, <laughs> if you could see, if you could hear and see me at the same time, you'd know that I was running on beat. Oh. I'm always running on the beat. Yeah. There's barely any time, unless I'm thinking of a new cheesecake flavor, then I'm always running on the beat. So you're running, you're listening, and you're... I'm thinking. thinking. Oh, you thinking. can think about it. That's another thing. You're, you're thinking. I mean, life things, you know, um, cheesecake flavors, um, <laughs> you know, everything. Or songs, you know. I love it. I have to, we have to go. I'm sorry that we have to go. I really enjoyed the conversation. Well, this has been also. a long time coming. I, thank you, Jay, for giving me a show so that I could invite Otto here to talk. <laughs> We're going to wrap up. I have to read things now. Um, I'm Donna Blanchard of Kumukuhua Theater. My ear piece keeps coming out of my ear. I apologize for my, I don't know why my ear is rejecting the piece. Um, this is the Arts in Hawaii on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for Ian Davidson, who is normally in my ear. We hope he feels better. This is Jay Fidel in my ear right now, who somehow manages to keep us all together. And thank you also to Tracy, um, Chrissy Goffigan, who handles all of our social media. Uh, thank you very much to Otto for being here. Visit the shop in Kaimuki. Uh, see the show. Hopefully he'll do it again and look for... Um, uh, the band 86 and, and hear them soon. We will see you next week. <laughs>